Now since I've not used this bush hog yet, what I need to do is hook up my three-point hitch without the PTO shaft connected. Once it's hooked up, I want to make sure that the shaft has enough room to slide in and out so that it doesn't bind when I pick up or lower the, uh, the mower. So without the drive shaft connected, I'm going to hook up the three-point on the bottom here, and then we'll take some measurements or do some visual inspections and see if I need to cut that shaft. I hope I don't have to. Forgot to put on my favorite deer skin leather gloves. If you have the turnbuckle style three-point stabilizers, it's really worth investing in these telescopic stabilizers. Makes a, a difficult situation a little less difficult. Everybody equally loves hooking up three-point attachments. Now I'll just hook up this top link. Short, of course. I like to adjust this top link connection so that this arm is down just a little bit, and what that does is it creates a it creates a hinge or a fulcrum point there where if you're backing into a ditch or an embankment, it lets the back end of this mower drop down, where if you had this just straight, it would be basically a fixed position where it wouldn't be able to move up and down. So you want this back end of the three-point uh, mower, the bush hog, to be able to float. And I'll adjust this more once it's running, but I think right about there will be good, and that gives it room to move up and down and give you a little bit of flexibility there. So, but that's also important why I want to check the distance of this three-point PTO shaft because I want to make sure that at full expansion and full contraction there's enough shaft there so it doesn't fall apart but also that there's not too much shaft that doesn't jam into that gearbox. So let's start it up and move this up and down a little bit. Got my parking brake applied. Neutral. Now that's not good. I could see when I was raising and lowering the mower, and when I raised it, 
the shaft would get closer and closer to the PTO. In fact, at full height, it was actually wanting to go on to the shaft. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of uh, expansion and contraction of this PTO shaft. It would work, it would actually go into place, but the problem is with these type mowers, again, they float. So if you were in fact mowing along a bank and you were to, and you were to back up along this bank, what happens is you're picking up the back of the mower. And when you pick up the back of the mower, it's pushing that shaft forward toward the PTO. So I wanna make sure that if I'm mowing and I happen to be raising up the back of this thing, that I'm not putting pressure on that gearbox because you can, well, you can completely destroy your PTO gearbox and nobody wants that to happen. I'm gonna to have to cut the shaft. So what I'm gonna to have to do is completely remove this drive shaft. Now, of course, it's not connected on the tractor end, but on the mower end, there is a shear bolt. So I need to take that shear bolt out take off the drive shaft completely and that way I can measure and see the exact length that I need and also account for that expansion and contraction of that drive shaft. Hand tight, nice. Oh boy. Oh, there's a retainer clip in there. So if, even if you shear the bolt, you don't lose the shaft. That makes sense. I bought a set of these retainer clip pliers when I was about 20 years old. I've not used them very often, but when you need them, they sure come in handy. I really want you to see this so that if nothing else, you can sympathize with me. But I don't, I'm probably blocking your shot, but it's also raining right now. Where'd this come from? Ah, oh, it popped off. Nice. There it is. Well, the camera's inside, but I'm outside. It's raining. I guess I'll take a break. All right, that was not a bad little passing rain. Okay, so now this should slide right off. That was easy. So because this shaft is so long and I'm already just shy of the PTO shaft, I'm going to cut three inches off of this shaft. So what I need to do is separate the shaft and cut three inches off each side, which will give me three inches. It won't give you six inches, it'll give you three inches. So three inches off each side will shorten the shaft three inches. Now this drive shaft is only about an inch too long, but I'm gonna take three inches off it because again, I want that mower to have the flexibility of being able to rise up in the back and compress that shaft a little bit more. So I'm gonna take three inches off. We've got plenty of travel here. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about how to properly measure and cut a drive shaft. So I'm not gonna go through all that right now, but John Ritter from A Ritter Bit Will Do has a great video on it. Tractor Time with Tim has a great video. Just do a search, you'll find plenty of videos if you need to accurately cut a drive shaft for your implement. So, but the first thing I'm gonna do is just take this apart. And all we have to do is mark and cut three inches off of the plastic cover and then three inches off of the metal shaft. I'm gonna use a, uh, little angle grinder with cutoff wheels for that. So I've got a marker here. 
and we'll just mark that at three inches. I've got my DeWalt cordless four inch grinder here with a real thin cutoff wheel. So I'm just gonna zip this around the plastic part and that should come right off and then we'll measure and cut the metal. Now I'll just measure three inches back. Make a mark there. And cut that off. Now I'll just take a little rat tail file and file the burrs off the inside of this. And we can go around the outside too. I'll get a flat file for that. Then we'll do the same thing to the other half. Now you know you want this plastic cover to be shorter than the metal shaft and that's so that when you're assembling the two pieces you're not fighting trying to connect four different pieces together rather than just the two. So you want that to be shorter. This is about a half inch shorter. I'm actually gonna cut it even shorter yet because here's what I'm thinking. That if you happen to put this on another machine and you pull apart the drive shaft, I'm gonna make the uh, plastic part at least another inch shorter. And that way, if you're expanding this drive shaft and the two plastic pieces come apart, then you know you're getting awful close to the end of that and you better not use the shaft that way. So I think that'll work really well as a safety feature to cut another inch off of this. So the same thing on this other end of the shaft, I'm going to cut four inches off of the plastic sleeve and then three inches off of the metal drive shaft itself. Now if you wonder which one is the outer shaft and which one is the inner shaft, well the outer shaft is the one with a label on it, so that's easy to remember if you have a label. I'm going to take my lube shuttle grease gun and I'm going to grease the inside of this and I'll slide the other one back and forth a few times just to get some grease in there. So I'm just going to go around the edge here and just apply some grease in there. Very nice. And maybe the right thing to do would be to take this cover off and then put grease all along this shaft, but in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do that. Now, of course, there are three ways, only one of three ways that this shaft will fit together, and ultimately, it's always gonna be the last one you try. Or maybe it was the first one, but I didn't do it right. Or maybe it was the second one. Why don't they make this universal? I'm not sure. Does it really matter? All right, put that together and slide this in. There it is. All 
All right, let's take it outside. Man, I am sweating like Elvis in concert, boy. It is hot. You know, you can actually turn these screws a little bit. They're sort of cam shaped on this one. And then you can pull that back. How about that? Very nice. Let's see if we can get that C-clip back in place. Boy, there is nothing better than having the right tool for the job. That was not hard at all. And we'll drop this shear bolt through here. Gonna go a little more than hand tight this time. These just turn a half a turn. So they're not really screws. They are just nylon. Pieces. There. Nice. Half a turn and they lock in place. Now let's see how we did here. That's great. That's about three inches away from the PTO. I can slide that up and turn it. And there we go. And that's locked in. Now, just to be certain, I'm going to raise this up. And with that raised up, I'm going to remove the drive shaft again. Make sure we have plenty of room for this shaft to contract. Plenty. I've still got about three inches there, so that's great. All right, let's go cut some flowers down. sure if I mentioned but Ann's actually the one who wanted a bush hog she kept saying get me a bush hog because you know she was using the finished mower in the woods and whatnot and I said you need something more substantial than that so the corn was a fail this year so she's gonna mow it down Ann's also the one who said, I want a canopy for the tractor. The sweet corn might have been a bust this year, but look at this watermelon. This thing has got to be two feet long. Amazing. 